Hello and welcome to this video on estimation problems in M+. In this video I want to give you two examples of estimation problems that can happen when you fit a confirmatory factor analysis or structural equation model in M+. I want to show you the error messages that you get and talk about what they mean and how you can troubleshoot. So in this case here I have an example. I have a one-factor CFA model with two indicators that I'm running in M+. And Let's see what happens. You can see we have here one factor F. We have two indicators, two observed variables for measuring this factor. And I'm going to run this model like this. You can see input reading terminated normally. So that looks good. But when we scroll down a little bit further. You can see we get this very ugly message here that says the degrees of freedom for this model are negative. The model is not identified. No chi-square is available. Check your model. It still says the model estimation terminated normally. I'm not sure about that because also the standard errors of the model parameter estimates could not be computed. The model may not be identified. So that shows you there's a problem with this model. You can see in the model results section, you then only get the first column with the parameter estimates, but you don't get a column with standard error, Z statistic, P value, none of that. So that shows you, you shouldn't trust these parameter estimates because at least some of them might be biased because this model is not identified. Now, why is this model not identified? It's not identified because it's a one factor model with two with just two indicators and the factor is not correlated with any other variable in the model and that model per se is not identifiable when you estimate one of the two loadings the first loading will automatically be fixed in m plus to will be fixed to one for identification but the second loading will be estimated and that's not possible unless you have another variable in the model that this factor correlates with or if you have more indicators of that factor, at least three. So one thing that you can do if you don't have another variable as an indicator of this factor, and you have only two, then you'd have to make an assumption about the loadings. So you could assume that the variables are essentially tau equivalent if they're measured on the same scale. In this case, that would be reasonable because both of these indicators have 12 items. It's a sum of 12 items and they're very similar. So they should be in the same metric. They should have the same units of measurement. And so we could fix the second loading to one, assuming essential tau equivalence, meaning the variables could still differ in their means, but they can no longer differ in their loadings. And then the model is identified, even if the factor does not correlate with another variable in the model. So let's run this and see what happens. You can see now this message went, went away. You only get the message, the model estimation terminated normally and the model is saturated, but it is identified. It has zero degrees of freedom, but it's identified. We say it's just identified or saturated and you get parameter estimates and you can trust those parameter estimates because this is an identified model. And so at least what you get from this model are the standardized loadings and the reliabilities or R squared values at the end that tell you how reliable these variables are as measures of the factor. In this case, 62% of the variance in the first indicator was accounted for by the factor and 76% of the variance in the second indicator was accounted for by the factor. So those would be the reliability. So that's one issue or one solution to this problem when you have a factor with just two indicators. As long as the indicators have a similar metric, you can then use them as essentially tau equivalent measures, meaning you can set the loadings equal, you fix them both to one, and then the model is identifiable. Of course, this doesn't work if you have indicators that come in different metrics, then you can't fix the loadings to the same value. Now, another solution is if you can't do this, is you can add another variable to the model that you know this factor is correlated with. So in this case, for example, we could take this variable here, ma sum from our list and put that into the model by adding it to the use variables. ma sum is the math sum score of a math test. And so that is very likely positively correlated and substantially correlated with this factor. So if we then say f with ma sum, 
then the model should also be identifiable as long as the correlation between f and ma sum is substantial. So let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. We can see again, no message about under-identification. This model is identifiable. It's still saturated. No degrees of freedom, no chi-square test, but you get parameter estimates that are trustworthy. And you can see that's because this factor is correlated substantially with the math sum score. This covariance is highly significant and the correlation in the standardized solution you can see here is 0.3. So that's also statistically significant. And so because of that substantial correlation, the model becomes identified even with the second loading freely estimated. You can see this can now be estimated freely and it's close to one because they're essentially tau equivalent measures but you don't have to fix the loading to one if you have a correlate of that factor that correlate could be an observed variable like in this case or that correlate can be a latent factor so if you, if you have another factor that um, is correlated with this factor then this would also work now let's move on to some other example where we get a different message so in this scenario i have a one factor model again F and I have my two indicators MRT1 and MRT2 but I also added MRT sum here which is stupid so that's the sum of the two and that doesn't make sense because the information is already contained in MRT1 and MRT2 and so um, I just did that to illustrate another error message that then occurs so that you can see what happens in that case and why so let's run this and so let's go down and see what that produces. Oh, you can see it says no convergence, serious problems in iterations, check your data starting values and model. And so this issue about non-convergence, you might get this message for a variety of different reasons. One reason could be that simply your measures have very different variances. They come maybe in very different metrics. Maybe you have indicators of stress where one indicator is measuring self-reported stress on a scale from zero to 10. And then another measure is a measure of stress that looks at cortisol levels and they come in um, some other metric. And so then the um, problem could lie in the fact that the indicators have such different variances and so then M plus doesn't know how to really um, assign the factor variance or how to, how to get that information. And so then providing starting values can help or directly fixing the factor variance instead of fixing a factor loading can help in that case too. So you can fix the factor variance to one instead of fixing any of the loadings and then often that helps with convergence. So that would be a very benign reason for convergence issues. Another reason could be that you have a very complex model and maybe you have too many factors in the model, too many parameters and so therefore it just is impossible for M plus to find um, a solution then a good strategy is to simplify the model make it smaller maybe drop some factors see how that works and then um, you can determine what when when the problem at which point that happens when the model becomes too complex now in this case the reason is simply that i put a redundant indicator on that factor which makes no sense because the sum of the two MRT subscales is, of course, perfectly determined by those other two subscales because the sum is the sum of those two. And so, therefore, we get estimation problems because the sum doesn't provide any independent new information. It's perfectly the perfect de deterministic function of the other two. And so then that's why we get those convergence problems. You can see that here from the very high correlations between the sum score and the components of the sum score, of course. And so it doesn't make sense to put the components as indicators of a factor and the sum of the components as well. That would be redundant. And so here this causes convergence problems. Again, when you get something like that, and plus might still give you estimates, but those estimates aren't trustworthy and you don't get standard errors. You don't get other 
things. Now, what you can also try is you can provide user defined starting values and M plus helps you a little bit with that because at the end it gives you the model command with final estimates used as starting values. And then you can use these as a starting point for assigning your own starting values in case that is the reason for those convergence problems. And so that is also something that you can try. You can also try to increase the number of iterations from the default number of iterations to see if the model will, will converge with more iterations. But of course, this only makes sense if there's not a problem with the model per se. And often that is the reason for convergence problems is that there is an issue with the model itself. It's maybe not identified, it's over-parameterized, it's too complex and so on. So the best advice is really to check your model and to rethink your model when you have convergence problems and also to think of the fact whether your variables come in very different metrics. If they do, then um, fixing the factor variances instead of fixing a loading can be an easy solution. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have other things that you would like to see discussed with regard to M+, then please leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next time.